All right, hello and good morning. This is video 954. And uh, this may actually end up being just a general, one of those long rants. <laughs> um, but it's been kind of a hell of a week. Been kind of a hell of a week. Hell of a week. Uh, we are just before the 4th of July holiday, 2023. And um, much like they did last year, the Supreme Court of the United States announced some pretty pretty heavy rulings. Um, it was just about a year ago they um, said that women uh, do not have authority over their own bo our own bodies. Um, and then yesterday, the um, Supreme Court, or a couple days ago, I should say, two or three days ago, Supreme Court decided that um, basically discrimination against black folks was okay and was going to go on um, in the realm of uh, opportunity, college, college and knowledge. Um, which will trickle down to other things. They also decided that it was okay to uh, discriminate and, um, um, you know, against gay people and transgender people and whatnot. That, you know, if you are a pu person selling something in a public place or whatnot, yeah, you, you can say, I don't want to sell to you because I don't like you. I mean, I guess it's freedom, it's America, but um, it just doesn't seem right, does it? I'm not going to sell to you because you're black. I don't like blacks. Well, that's wrong. I hope you'll say that's wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to sell this um, drill to you because you're a woman and I don't think women should have power tools. Um, you know, we would probably agree that that would be um, bad, wrong, you know, not American capitalism. Um, but somehow it's okay to say that to a gay person or a transgender person. Um, so what that does is it, it affirms that, uh, much like last year, you know, women of all colors, creeds, races are second class citizens in comparison to men. It affirms that black people and brown people, Latino, uh, are second class citizens in comparison to white people, and it affirms that LGBTQ people are second-class citizens compared to straight and cisgendered people. Um, you know, depending on how many second-class citizens you have there, um, you know, white men at the top, cis white men, um, you know, uh, below that are going to be cis white women. Below that might be um, heterosexual black men, maybe. Below that, cis heterosexual black women. <laughs> below that, <laughs> I mean, it's it's not just a matter of second class. It's it's. It's a hierarchy that gets, you know, and, and, you know, if you happen to be gay, black, and transgender, you're on the bottom. You know what I mean? And um, it's just one of those things. It's, uh, it's, it, 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 I mean, it, it is the way it is. It is the way it is. And um, it's not going to change until, uh, you know, enough people vote in legislature legislators congress folks and senators 
in the, at the federal and state level and local level that are not white supremacist, racist, misogynistic, fascist, authoritarian, uh, homophobic, blah, 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 you know, transphobic people. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, categories to that. Um, you know, until there are enough people that will vote uh, you know, I'm going to say decent human beings. That's the only thing I could really think of uh, into office because uh, it really doesn't matter what color your skin is or what you believe religiously. If you if you believe that, you know, equality is a universal thing and that all people are created equal, blah, 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 and offered certain unalienable rights by their creator or not, if you're not a religious person, whatever. Uh, if you just like being a decent human being, I think that's probably going to be the, the, the acid test for me going forward. Um, you know, until our government is made up of people that believe in equality and perhaps even equity in addressing, um, you know, making amends for past transgressions and helping to not just provide equality of access, but address equity, you know, equity, so that all people have the same, you know, maximize the potential for what they want to do for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, you know, that's just the way that it is. And it, it's going to be this way for 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. I don't know. More than my lifetime. Absolutely. Um, so I, I will make do with whatever the remainder of my life is. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so kind of a bummer. Kind of a bummer. Kind of a bummer there. Um, so that's kind of the current mood that I'm in. Um, just kind of looking around and wondering why this is acceptable. And uh, later will come probably a question of why aren't my fellow human beings doing something about this? Um, and maybe that just takes time. Maybe that just takes time. Last week in France, um, a young black man uh, you know, a man, you know, 20 year old young black man, um, was shot by a police officer, a cop at a traffic stop, killed. And the French citizens lost their motherfucking minds and have been protesting. And like, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter what color you are, <laughs> the people been protesting and because of that the government is making is, is looking at making changes um, all over the death of one black young man we here in America um, you know we just ignore it you know yeah, he's black doesn't matter I mean literally um and it, it just blows my mind, you know, just blows my mind. A um, couple years ago, um, Australia had a mass shooting and they changed their gun policy. I mean, you can still own a gun, you can have guns, da 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 da, but there's no more mass shootings in Australia. Why can't we do that here, you know? It, why, why do other civilized nations have universal health care, have, um, you know, uh, it, I don't know. There's just some things about our government and our system, our way of doing things that are just so fucked up, you know. Um, but that's the way that it is. And I think it will change in time, you know, 
to whatever degree it can. Um, so that's kind of where we're at on that. Um, page two. Do my Paul Harvey here. Page two. Um, been feeling a little bit of trepidation. I had mentioned last week about my um, um, breast augmentation, the breast fairy. Um, that's going to happen in February of 2024, some eight months from now, 240 some odd days from now. Not that I'm counting. Um, but you know, it's for me personally, it's it's hard to feel like I'm not being not necessarily narcissistic, but um, it's not necessarily vanity, but I feel like I'm being kind of vain. Um, you know, the I, I'm not sitting on a pile of cash here. You know, it's it's going to take some changes in how we do stuff here. Um, so there's kind of a bit of a financial guilt, for lack of a better word. Now, now that's not a plea for help, okay? I'm, I'm not looking for money. I'm not looking for donations. I'm not looking for a handout. Um, it, it's, uh, if all goes to plan, I will be able to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? And if something happens that I can't, uh, I can't do it this year, then we'll do it next year. Or, you know, we'll try again. It's, it's, um. It's just a matter of, you know, prioritizing certain things over other things. But it does make me feel a little bit selfish, for lack of a better word. Um, you know, as a parent, um, I'm not saving up for my daughter's college. Okay. Um, I'm not saving up for my own retirement. <laughs> um, when the pandemic hit, um, I basically did my 401k down to the bare possible minimum. I have to do, I mean, Humana, um, I guess you don't have to do it, but, um, I think they, they advise a minimum of 5% and Humana, my company will give you, um, $5 for every dollar you put in your 401k up to a certain point. And so it's just one of those things mentally, it is a hit and a half for your ass if you're not contributing to your 401k if you can. And kind of the minimum threshold for that is you have to do at least, I think, five bucks. And so that's why, I mean, not five bucks, um, 5%. Um, and so really, I kind of just decided, okay, we're going to take it from what it was, which was like 8% down to 5% and just ignore it, you know, not even think about it, not even look at it. So if I needed to, I could change that down to zero and that would give me, you know, maybe an extra dollar or two in my paycheck. It's not that much, but, um, you know, over the next 20, well, 14 years. <laughs> I'm hoping that it'll amount to something and I'm hoping that I'll get into a position a couple years from now, maybe once I move and get settled in where I'm going to end up moving to. I don't want to stay in Indiana longer than I have to. Um, you know, then I'll, I'll get back on the 401k, but for the immediate future, I don't know, I've kind of gone off on a tangent here, but the, the, the thing is I feel somewhat guilty. I feel somewhat like I could be, you know what I mean? It, it's um, it's not vanity. It could be seen as vanity. Uh, I know sometimes facial feminization can be seen as, as vanity, and I am guilty. I've, I've done it myself. Um, you know, uh, when you when you can't do something, it's very easy to get jealous of other people, and I am I am guilty of that. I have to, I am, I am, I, but I, I think it's human nature. That's not to excuse it, but I think we, we in general, uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, a couple of rich fucks, uh, decided they were going to go see the Titanic and there was a mishap and 
for a bunch of other reasons. And, you know, people were like, aha, you know, good, the millionaires, the billionaires are dying or something. I wasn't part of that boat. But you, you do have to not laugh at someone's misfortune, but it's one of those things, the oppressed, <laughs> the slaves, are going to laugh when the master fucks up. I mean, it's it's in our nature to you know, take that as, as what you will. So I think there are things we, as human beings, we, you know, you'll you'll see the memes and whatnot on Facebook, you know, don't compare yourself to other people. Don't, you know, don't base your happiness on someone else. Well, yeah, if you can. <laughs> um, I try to remember that, but, you know, it does happen. We do, we do look at other people and we're like, why is it my life like that, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm not taking a vacation, um, somewhere in Mexico or the Caribbean or to Spain. And, uh, I'm, I'm not sitting on a bathtub on the beach, you know, holding the hand of someone else that's special to me, drinking a, uh, you know, a margarita or a Bloody Mary or a pina colada on the beach, you know, in a bathtub. I mean, I don't, know if you could do such thing there's commercials about it though but you know what i mean it's like it, it's it's hard i i think it's just a human it's a human emotion you know we uh i don't necessarily think we can control our emotions we we can definitely control our reaction to an emotion to a stimulus uh you know if something if you feel like there's an injustice and you feel yourself getting angry you can get angry. That is a response. What you do with that anger is in within your control. But you're going to get angry. You're going to get sad. You're going to get, you know what I mean? It's, you know, uh, to, to err is human, to forgive is divine, as the saying goes. You know, you prick my finger. Do I not bleed? You know. But anyway, it's a long off track. Um, so, yeah, I am feeling somewhat guilty. It's, it's kind of a gray area about my breasts and um i uh, there's a, a piece of software i don't know the name of it my phone isn't within reach but the company that manufactures the uh some one of the manufacturers of breast implants i think it's called natriel probably if you google it breast implant natriel uh, like natural, but with two L's and an E at the end. Um, natural <laughs> Um They make a piece of software for your phone that uh, you take a picture of yourself from the front, from, you know, 45 from the side, 45 from the side. And it will render, you know, uh, a before and after you know, a 3D model, basically, that you can manipulate the size and the shape of a breast implant, just so you can get an idea, and it doesn't have your head on it, but it's your torso, you know, um, as a way, I think, of selling their product, but it, 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 it you know, and it, it'll say, you know, the results are not to be meant as, you know, your final results, or this is just a, 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 a visualization, you know, to help you visualize, you know, well, do I want to get a uh, Do I want to get a, a silicone uh, implant? Do I want to get a saline implant? Do I want to get a There's like a gummy bear hybrid of the two. Do I want to get a tear shaped one? Do I want to get a round one? How big do I want? You know, different options. You know, in the same way that I think there's apps now where you can see yourself with different haircuts or you know, I don't know, different shoes. You know, without buying the shoe. Um, same kind of thing. And, um, you know, and I, I like the way I would look. And if this is true, you know, if, if, there, if an inkling of this application is true, um, you know, I definitely, uh, what I have is my body fat. I am fat. I am obese. Okay. <laughs> I may be beyond obese. I know I'm morbidly obese, but, you know, what I have is, you know, I'm a potato. I think I've said that before. Some people are apples. Some people are pears. Uh, what is the other one? 
an hourglass figure. I'm a potato. You know, I have lumps and uh, <laughs> bits of me that are way out here and bits of me that are in here. I mean, I'm a potato. You know, and and all I'm doing when I put on a bra is just pushing. You know, my, my flesh. You can see. You know, that's my bra. That's what I fill up my bra with is my body fat. It's not. You know. Not really breast, breast tissue. It's, well, it probably is technically, but you know what I mean. And, uh, you know, if you, if you read some of the testimonials um, or some of the write-ups, you know, it's not exclusive to transgender people. You know, cis people get their breasts reduced in, you know what I mean? Enlarged, changed. Um, if you have cancer, you, you want reconstruction. If they take one or both, or you know what I mean? It's um, it, it's a real thing. It's not just a cosmetic thing. And I think for transgender people, it can be very life affirming. Obviously, for transgender men or you know trans masculine people. Um, you know, it is life changing. Um, it's not just cosmetic, and I think for for us trans women, it, it's the same kind of thing. If if HRT doesn't deliver, <laughs> you know, I, I I don't know, I don't know. But I I tend to put it in a different class than the other. I, at face value, you want to say, well, it's, it's you know, it's not like getting a no job. I don't like the shape of my nose, but at the same time. If you don't like the shape of your nose, well, shouldn't you be able to change the shape of your nose? I mean, I mean, why, why would you live? Why would you live <laughs> hating yourself? You know what I mean? So I don't know where I'm going with that, but um, so I kind of have to think about my quality of life. And what life I have left, as I mentioned before, 10, 20, 30 years, um, you know, that kind of put breast surgery, you know, uh, I, I have to take care of the minimum. I have to take care of the things that I'm obligated to do, food, shelter, um, clothes for my daughter. Um, things that she needs for her education, for her high school education. Um, you know, that has to come first. I am not going to put any of her stuff in jeopardy or at risk. So that is there. You know, I wouldn't be doing this if I could not provide for her, as well as for me, my food, my shelter. You know, da, 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 da. Um, but it, it, it does, I think, there is a quality of life issue for me. Once the basics are done, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, you know, then I need to look at my happiness and da 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 da. da. <coughs> uh, so that's something I am kind of dealing with, you know, of my own. Um, and to get over some of the of it, um, you know, it took me when I was having, um, when I was looking at GCS, um, it took all I had <laughs> to watch the video <laughs> of what they were going to do to me, you know? Um, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it was gripping things tightly and covering my eyes in some places, but I wanted to know what a penile inversion was okay um and in the same way i wanted to know what they were going to do to me how they were going to do to me what options they had where were they going to make the incision you know um and I, I i have some vivid memories of that still you know uh you know once was enough <laughs> you know knock my ass out uh i'm not going to be awake for it and you know, if I can deal with what they did down there, uh, making a hole and shoving something into it and then sewing it shut, not a problem, not a problem. Uh, but it has kind of been on my mind somewhat.
um, you know, how, how people would see me, um, you know, obviously, like I said, with, with the way I am right now, all I'm doing is pushing body fat. And, and even that I, I, I don't fill, I don't fill a cup. I don't fill, I don't fill the void. I don't fill the bra cup. Um, you know, so to, to, Be in a position where I would fill a cup, even if it is a sack of of um, gummy bear stuff. You know, I, I, again, I, I think that's going to be a good. It's a good thing for me, you know, and I will take the risk. And you know, as soon as I started YouTube, as soon as I started looking up videos and whatnot. Um, YouTube provided me with um, quite a number of, you know, you shouldn't get breast implants because blah, 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 blah. You know, and I, I think there's a value to being informed. You know, I did watch, I did read, I did, I did my own research. Um, but I, I've just kind of come to the conclusion is, you know, it's, I'm, I'm not going to know till I do it. And if it turns out it, it's not for me, take them out, you know? You don't like it, take it out. Hey, I tried it, it wasn't for me, blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of my own personal, whatever. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, the last thing I, I guess I'll, I'll close on, uh, page three. Um, I've kind of been thinking a lot about relationships and, um, you know, I... Um, I've not experienced being single as a woman. I mean, I, know, I guess you could argue the semantics of that, but you know what I'm saying? Post-transition. Um, I've not really had that experience yet. And uh, it will happen. You know, it will happen at its, when, when the time is right and, you know, whatever. It will happen. But I'm a little leery of, of trying to, you know, rush into something, it, it, assuming I had a line of suitors out my door, obviously. Um, but it just kind of makes me, I don't know, just, you know, put the brakes on it. At the same time, um, you know, for me personally, as... My daughter is is becoming a young lady. Um, you know, we don't quite have the degree of interactions that we used to because she is an adult. She's, you know what I mean? Like she's an adult. And, you know, she's on her way out. She's, she's doing her own thing. Um, and there are times where I guess I miss having that adult to adult interaction. And I was very fortunate yesterday to, to meet up with a friend of mine. I uh, came to see, we intersected in our orbits just for a little bit, just to talk. It was very nice, you know. Um, but I think beyond that, you know, my mind is open to a relationship beyond that. Now for me, it will probably be with a man, a cis man. Um, only cause women are insane. <laughs> <laughs> guilty um but no i i i think my my uh my ideal mate is 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 definitely going to be somebody who um who uh, can appreciate <laughs> playing with little plastic men um you know but i i kind of recently came my my orbit crossed someone else's orbit and, um, you know, being the opportunistic person that I am, I, I'm always looking for Mr. Right, you know, I'm, hmm. and um, I've kind of been questioning some of that, you know, we, we just don't know what's going to happen to us. My, my goal at the moment um, is to survive the next, you know, make it to my breast surgery in February. 
um, and then start to plan, you know, for my escape from Indiana. <laughs> um, you know, if what would happen if I was to meet somebody, you know, and he lived in Indiana, he had family in Indiana, you know, could I, could I, could I stay in Indiana? Probably, probably, uh, because that is, um, you know, that's navigating an asteroid field odds, okay? That's finding someone who uh, will accept a 50-year-old transgender woman. That is uh, pretty damn good odds, you know? Um, by the same token, you know, there are kind of some things I want to do and, and I want to try. And um, the place that I want to move to in North Carolina has a... Um, now, granted, I looked it up <laughs> again, opportunistic that I was, because I was thinking of moving somewhere in uh, in Colorado as well, if uh, North Carolina continues to be a uh, transgender hating state, because it's it's definitely sliding that way. But you don't know, you know, we don't know what the environment's going to be in two years. Um, but in both places where I want to move in Colorado, if I was to move there. Um, has a, oh, you know, a, a pioneer reenactment museum <laughs> where I could volunteer my time uh, and be a historical reenactor. I, I do want to do that, you know. Um, you know, both of, both places have a, a place set up kind of like Colonial Williamsburg, uh, which would be another good place to live. Um, where you, you know, I would be offered the opportunity to dress up as a colonial woman or a pioneer woman, you know, and, and weave fabric and, you know, and, and demonstrate to people what life was like, you know, several hundreds of years ago. Um, that to me is something I want to try before I die. Both places have that, you know, and, and, and you'll have that. You know, where there's people, there's history. Um, Colonial Boston would be ideal for that, you know. Um, but uh, the other things that I want to do, both of them have a, a, a Viking reenactment troupe, for lack of a better word. Uh, both of them have a very active SCA chapter. It's, uh, I think, Society of Creative Anachronism, you know different things that I wanted to do, that I want to do as an adult. Um, you know, I've made mention, you know, I, I want to try the furry thing too. I don't know, you know, put on a costume and act like a squirrel. I think that would be wonderful. Okay. Um, you know, uh, cosplay. I want to, I want to get a Ghostbuster outfit and walk around as a Ghostbuster with a proton pack on my back. I think that'd be fun. For a weekend, you know, um, there are things that I want to do that I can't do right now. It takes money. <laughs> um, so my life is not over and I'm not necessarily sure if that is going to intersect with another person. You know what I mean? My um, my hope is that my spouse, whoever they might be someday, uh, you know, is going to understand and and support me if I want to dress up like a, a, a sister of battle for the weekend, you know, and walk around carrying a bolter and and, uh, you know, and, you know, acting like I'm a sister, I'm a canoness, you know, sister of battle or fuck, I want to, you know. I want to, uh, I want to make a, uh, space Marine, you know, people make them too, the, uh, outfits, the armor and dress up like a space Marine and walk around. I mean, you know, I, I, I think my, my spouse would have to be very open-minded on that. At the same time, I know that there are things I've been interested in, uh, in the past I was involved in, um, uh, Amp Guard, which is which is um, like live action role play, but it's combat, you know, foam swords and shields and stuff like that. 
um you know there's some things in my past that i've done that i really don't have an interest in doing again but i might you know so i guess the short of it is you know there are things that i'm just kind of living one day at a time in the time that i have left um i know that i do not want to be alone um, I know that I do not want to be stuck in a bad marriage like I was before. Um, you know, so I don't know. And I don't know how long I'm going to live. None of us do. I could die tomorrow. I could have a heart attack. I could... Tonight, as I'm driving, I could get hit by a bus and die. Um, <laughs> so I just don't know. But anyway... So that's kind of the end of my rant. Um, you know, like most things with transitioning, we are taking, maybe I got one more thing in me. I got one more thing in me. Maybe I can wrap this up in less than five minutes. As much as we like to say it, you might want to sit down. I'm changing my mind now. There is a misconception that we are going to transition and that life is going to treat us as women. Again, I have to preface this. Maybe I should have said a transgender woman, it's going to be a transgender point of view, transgender woman point of view. But the notion is that, you know, if I go by a certain name and I start injecting myself with stuff, uh, hormones, da, 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 da. socially transition, perhaps medical transition a little bit too, that you know, life is going to be wonderful because I'm going to get to be my authentic self. Okay. Um, that's bullshit. That is absolutely 100% a crock of shit. Okay. Um, please do not be tricked <laughs> into such a simple thing. Um, it's something I think we can aspire to, but in the United States in 2023, <laughs> as I mentioned at the start of the video, um, it's perfectly legally legal, legally to be discriminated against, to be denied opportunity, to be treated as less than a human being, okay, as a transgender person. Now, that said, I can say without a doubt that my life today, you know, is probably better than any, any time in my life before, with the exception of the day my daughter was born. That was an awesome day, you know. Um, but how I live my life now is magnitudes better than how it was before. And I think as transgender rights continue and in the years to come, we're going to get more and more equality and whatnot. But I, I, I think it, it needs to be said that at its very basic level, um, there are certain things in our path of life and our orbit that we're on our trajectory. You know, there's, there's, uh, things that are never going to meet, you know, I was going to say non-parallel lines that never intersect, but if they're non-parallel at some point they'll meet, right? Um, <clears throat> 
you know, we are stuck, for lack of a better word, by some of the things that our bodies did to us when we were in the womb that no amount of surgery is going to fix. No amount of hormones is going to change. No amount of counseling and therapy is going to change. Okay. Um, but I think we will be much better and much happier than we would have been if we continued to live the lie and, and the falsehood and the shame and the guilt and frustration that we had before. So relatively speaking, yes. Um, you, you may find that you greatly increase your chances of feeling happy, uh, of liking yourself more. That is definitely a thing. Um, but fundamentally, I think we need to understand that, uh, you know, yes, on a gender spectrum, we might be more in the female feminine category. I am a woman, therefore. Um, but that said, we are tainted. We are changed by the environment in which we grew up in. We're programmed by people around us, by our parents, by the society. You know, it takes a village to raise a child, as they say. All of those things are going to come together, which is why it's so important for a transgender child to be raised in a, an environment that's loving and supportive of them, to have access to mental health counseling and uh, puberty blockers if they so choose, to help minimize and mitigate, you know. Uh, and so I think going forward, you know, a lot of the things that us older folks have to deal with, I think younger transgender people won't have to, and that'll be a great thing. But you know, like I said, we, and maybe I shouldn't say we, maybe I'll say me. Um, I carry with me a burden. I carry with me, uh, I will forever carry with me um, that thing that I am not, you know, I did not have a cis woman's experience. You can't, you know, you can come close. You know, like I said, you can have surgery to fix what your body did. You can do hormones to change what you can. You can do therapy. And society can definitely be very, very adapting to you. Um, but like I said, I, I think we need to realize there are limits to what we can change and what we can do. And, and as shown by this last week, uh, you know, a group of nine people, <laughs> um, you know, the majority opinion um, will set the tone for the world that we live in. You know, that, that doesn't mean it can't be changed. It can't be changed by the future. But for the time that we're alive, that I'm alive, maybe that you're alive, this is the way that it is. And, and I, I think we kind of have to accept that uh, transitioning is not a panacea. It's not a cure-all. It is very possible to still have a very sucky existence <laughs> after you transition. But, it, you know, it, it's going to be magnitudes better than, than what it was before. I mean, don't get me wrong. But um, I guess it's just something to be aware of. We are definitely going to feel the discrimination and hatred of people who don't understand who we are. Uh, and again, from my point of view, that the day that I went and spoke with the first therapist I spoke with and I said, hey, I'm, I know I'm transgender. I'm a transgender woman. I'm transgender. Help me out. What can what can we do? The therapist said, well, why why do you want to give up the privilege? And the uh, what else did you say it was the privilege? Anyway. The world is set in that motion, in that mold that men are superior to women um you know the the saying this is a man's world it, it's changing but you know it, it, 
there is an element actively working against us in society. I mean, people that just hate us. Um, whether it be for whatever reason, there's too, probably too many to, to list. Whether they like having a patriarchal society where men are dominant, um, whether they have a view that, again, they're on top, they don't want their way of understanding the world challenged, I, I don't know, you know. In a world where we say live and let live and treat other people as you want to be treated, these people have found this way of, of hating other people and getting away with it, not feeling guilt, you know, feeling guilt free about it. You know, being mean to other people and not feeling guilt over it. You know, because it's their religious views. Oh. Here I thought you were just an asshole. <laughs> but it's your religious views. Okay. You know. Uh, love the sinner. No. Love the sinner, hate the sin. You know. I'm not going to like you because you don't do what I want you to do. But anyway, I've gone on too long. But that's where I'm at this week. So, um, one trans at middle age. So I would say hang in there, my friends. Be cool. Stay cool. It's pretty warm out. <laughs> All the years we were told climate change was a hoax. There's no such thing. Global warming is a hoax. Same person that told us to drink bleach, right? All right, till next time. Bye-bye. And oop, helps if this is this mouse is not plugged in, but that's what I grabbed. Hello. There you go. Flashback to the 80s, right? Computer. <laughs> All right, till next time.